Payments are likely one of the more complicated things of e-commerce, especially when your architecture is composed and you have a separate front end dealing with a payment system that is third party. So if you want to know how Few Storefront 2 has solved the issues and how they architected the approach of payments, pay attention to this talk from Philip from Few Storefront. This one is important, so you better pay some attention. Hello, I'm Filip Indrasik, and I'm going to tell you everything about payments in Vue Storefront 2. What difficulties we have identified, how we approach them, and what we have done to provide the best possible developer experience. Let's start it. When you are developing a payment solution for your for certain provider, it might look pretty straightforward at first. However, more, more different solutions you develop, more you see, Every payment provider is very different. Some requires redirect, some requires additional requests. So the thing is, how, how are we going to give the best possible experience to developers? Let's imagine a component that handles flow of the payment and is dedicated for certain payment provider. The whole logic is inside and mostly you do not even need to care about it. All you have to do is install our NPM package, configure it, uh, and just mode the component in your checkouts view. In other words, you can implement support for payment provider in your VSF2 shop in less than one day. And I'm not only thinking about simple mock of user interface, I'm thinking about properly working solution. Let's dive into the subject from more technical side. Our solution is VSF Payment Provider Component. It is a Vue.js component that is responsible for displaying available payment methods from one provider, selecting a payment method, and configuring the payment method. By configuring, I mean, for example, providing details of your credit card to pay with. These were the um, responsibilities of this component. However, you might still wonder what if, if you have, if you need some kind of impact on what's happening internally. So let's move to the part about the extensibility. You can pass asynchronous functions to the VSF payment provider component to hook into different events within its life cycle, override initial function parameters, or just to react to specific events like method selection or maybe maybe before load or after load. However, as every payment provider is very different, not every hook is present in every integration. You should always refer to the documentation of specific provider to learn which hooks are available and when exactly it is being called. Okay, we have hooks, which gives you a lot. However, in some cases, it might not be enough. What to do then? Each payment module has a composable with methods and a state, which are used by VSF payment provider. Thanks to that, if you really need, you could create your own Vue.js component and just reuse our logic. In that case, we recommend to just copy our component and modify what's really needed. So. Anyway, it should remain pretty easy to update in the future. As you see, you could literally pick level of flexibility you need. If you want to integrate fast, you use our well-tested component. If you want to react to certain events, you use hooks. If it's still not enough, you can go a step further and create own component based on one we share. If you want totally different structure of the component, no problem, just reuse composable attached in the package. Thanks to that approach, you can implement working solution really fast and then focus only on customizing it for your needs. The component takes care of whole payment flow or almost whole. Let me show you under what conditions which strategy is being used. As you see, we have two possible strategies. Uh, we choose full control approach when provider's SDK is controlling user interactions. So all we can do is 
reacting on events from their SDK's component. VSS payment provider gives a possibility to hook into events so we can modify what's happening internally. In this approach, we have two additional hooks, which are before pay and after pay. Before pay allows us to make some action just before the payment. If an integration with your payment provider does not take care of placing an order, you might want to do it there. Why? You do not want to charge your customers before creating an order. It is all about what happens if some error appears. It is better to have an order without payment in database than charge customer and do not place an order because of some error. After pay allows us to make some action just after payment has been made. You might want to redirect there to thank you page or maybe clear the card and stuff like that. And it was all about full control strategy. The second approach is used when the component handles only a part of payment flow. Basically, it does everything like full control, but it does not make a payment. Here, you are getting a dedicated method from the composable that allows you to make a payment from any place. Okay, we went through the theory. Now I would like to show you a real world integration with Adyen payment provider. Here we have a simple document that describes how to install and configure integration with at the end payment provider. Let's copy a first comment. And uh, here I have a simple project that, that I've generated with VSF CLI. Um, I added nothing there. So, it's, so it is basic uh, VSF2 application with um, commerce tools. So at first, I would like to uh, use yarn at VSF Enterprise at the end. Obviously, earlier I, I, I've already installed dependencies. As you see, I installed Enterprise at the end. Uh, as you see, it is Enterprise package, so you might not have access to this one. Do not worry if this command throws you an error because this package comes from the private repository. Let's back to the installation guide. Here we have uh, first. Here we have second step, which is uh, add VSF Enterprise at the end to the rough sources. So let's do it. We have to do it inside our Nux config.js. It's pretty simple. Ther the third step is to register VSF Enterprise at the end Nux module. Uh, however, inside, as you see, we have uh, some placeholders. That's why I've already prepared this part, which is already filled with proper credentials, and I will just copy paste it from my testing file. Here it is. Let's move to the fourth step, which is extending our middleware. Here we have exactly the same case. And once again, I have already prepared uh, credentials for this step. So I'm going to open middleware config.js and just add a new integration with Adyen there. It is very important to uh, have origin as a URL of your front end, even, it is, even if it is a local host, it is crucial to make everything work properly. The fifth step is to add origin to allowed keys origins in Adyen's dashboard. I will show you exactly where is it. Now my session expired, so I will, will rel so I will re-log in. Uh, and here under the account API credentials, we have WS. And here below we have a panel called allowed origins. Here we have to add our front-end origin. As you see, I already have localhost 3000. 
So we can move to the next step. And the next step is to deploy ADN integration. Here we have a repository from Commerce Tools, which is integration between ADN and Commerce Tools. As you see, they share uh, two modules, extension module and notification module. They act like a bridge between Commerce Tools and ADN. Extension module would be used when we are sending requests uh, from our VSF2 application and notification module is being used when ADN uh, sends some asynchronous update of a payment to the commerce tools. It would be best to deploy it as Google function or AWS Lambda. As in this talk, we are focused on payments and not on certain payment. I've already prepared a deployment for extension and notification module. And I will just show you how it works, not, not how to deploy it because it would be too much for this talk. So let's move to the next step. Next step is to just uh, mount our payment add-in provider component. So let's copy paste this part. Let's paste it there. Now, obviously, we also have to import it and put in components. Path would be VSS Enterprise slash NDN slash SRC slash payment add-in provider. Now we have the component. However, we would also like to apply some after pay and order hook. So let's get rid of process order. And here I will add order. Let's get rid of main because in case of Adian integration, uh, our middleware already takes care of placing an order to make sure that one request from front end does both. Uh, well, both finalizes the payment and places an order. Let's make sure it's also exported. Okay, here it is. Another thing is that I could get rid of these useless parts because we do not think we do not need to make an order button anymore because our add-in drop-in will act like it. Okay, as you see, it looks like we have everything there. So we probably should be able to run our app. Ah, I see one more thing is here. It is not order.value ID, it's just order.id right now. So let's now run the app with yarn dev. And let's try to open it. So here I have an app. Let's restart it and let's add something to the cart and try to move through the um, process of the checkout. So we go to checkout, let's fill it with some data. It can be USA, California, okay. And now in the last step of the checkout, we have at the end dropping. I will show you. I will show you simple payment with uh, Mastercard card with um, 3DS2 authentication. So it is five four five four card. Obviously, it is uh, Adian's sandbox. It is not a real credit card. So now I click order and pay, and it tries to make payment request. It uh, it, in response, it gets information well, it needs 3DS2, so it does two challenges. And this is the second one because the first one is transparent. This is the challenge shopper. Here, we have to provide the password. In this example, password is just a password because it's a sandbox. And after that, we click submit, request is going. And in the response, we have success. 
Now we should have payment both in the ADN and order with the attached payment in the commerce tools. So let's at first open commerce tools. Here, uh, I have a new order just placed. Let's uh, copy this interaction ID because uh, we will we will be able to identify it with identify it in ADN by this identifier by this identifier. Um, so let's move the ADN dashboard. And here in transactions, payments, we should have a new one. Let's, let's, let's compare it with our uh, just copied ID. And there it is. It is our new payment, as I said, MasterCard. And if we click in details, we see it has been authorized. Um, we see it is a 3DS in version 2.1 and everything looks fine. Uh, we have history, we've received, authorized, sent for settled. So we have payment in ADN, we have ordered in commerce tools with attached payment and everything looks uh, very promising. The thing is just look how fast I was able to implement this. Obviously in normal case, you would need to also deploy uh, these two modules from commerce tools on Google function. Uh, however, it still should take less than one day. And yeah, it was an example how cool uh, this approach is. So from my perspective, it's everything what I wanted to tell you about payments. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching and let's start Q&A.